Hey, what's up on one for the raw photographers in this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at blending modes and see how they work and how they can help your photography workflow. So let's get started. So this photo, it looks a little bit washed out. I took it in the Canadian Rockies, but it'll serve our purpose. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to label or rename this layer as base because when we're working with blend modes, we have a base layer or a base image. It can also be a base overlay or a base color. And then we have a layer or a filter or an effect on top of it. So to demonstrate that purpose, I'm gonna bring in a color grid and it's right here. And I'm gonna change the size of this just to make it a little bit smaller. That looks good. So here we have 100% black and this is 100% white. And then we have different shades of gray and so forth. This should be 50% gray right here. The way blend modes work is it has a top blend layer that blends in with a base layer based on pixel by pixel or color by color, and it depends on the blend mode you select. So in On One Photo Raw, the blend modes are grouped into different sections. There's the darken blend modes, the brighten or lighten blend modes. These are the contrast blend modes. These are the comparison or difference blend modes. And then we have the color and the brightness blend modes right here. So we'll try to take a look at a few of them to see what's happening with these blend modes. And before I get into that, keep in mind, as I mentioned, the blend modes could also be applied as an adjustment, as a local adjustment by going to the blend mode right here. And let me just close this and delete it. it can also be applied as a filter. So if I go to the HDR look, and then click on the masking area. There's also the blending options right here. So blending options or blend modes could be used with different types of effects or different types of uh, editing tools, including brushes. So anyways, I'm going to just delete this effect here to make this layout a little bit clean or the interface a little bit clean. And so I have the blend layer right here, which is called shades. And then I have the base layer. So what happens with the blend layer is that it takes a look at each pixel on the base layer and compares it with its own layer and then determines what color or luminosity the pixel should be depending on one of these algorithms or mathematical blend modes. So if we take a look at dark in here, these blend modes darken the image when it's blended in with its own pixels. So if I click on darken here, what happens is in On One Photo Raw, the two layers are compared, the shades layer and the base layers, and it's gonna select the darkest pixel. So remember, this is 100% black. So this is why this is being shown in the darken blend mode. And then we have white here. Remember we had 100% white, and white, it's the brightest. So anything on the base layer is usually going to be the darkest unless it's 100% white, which is the clouds. And then we can see the gradual differences as we go through the different shades of gray, as well as the different shades of green as well. And then we also have multiply, which does a mathematical calculation and literally multiplies and just makes the image even darker. And then there's different blend modes for the other darken options. One thing to keep in mind is that these mathematical calculations, they're not available from what I saw on the On One Photo Raw user guide. However, if you do Google the Photoshop blend modes and the help guide, they'll show you the calculations for their blend modes. So it's a little bit similar if you wanna look that up. And then remember, when I go back to darken here, the black, it's 100% black, so this is shown, but the white area is not shown. But if I go to the opposite of the darken blend modes and go to the lighten blend modes, you can see what happens with 100% white here. 
This is the brightest part between the two layers. So it chooses this 100% white and black is not shown. And then we can go through color dodge, linear dodge and so forth. Usually linear burn and linear dodge are the darkest and brightest, but it could depend on on one's calculation or you can eyeball it as well. And then we're going to take a look at the overlay options, which are the contrast. Usually I like using the overlay, soft light, hard light, and then these other contrast options. I usually don't use them. They don't usually look good unless you're doing some type of interesting graphic design. But let me delete this shades layer right here. I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to duplicate this base layer by clicking on this icon here and then I'll just rename it blend layer and as you can see nothing's happening here because the blend mode is normal but if I click on darken nothing still happens because each pixel or each color between these two layers it's the same color or the same luminosity so the pixels don't change so darken does nothing, lighten does nothing. But if we start going to the other one, such as multiply, you can see it gets a lot darker. It has a very interesting look right here in the top of the mountains, but this part of the image doesn't look as good. So this is something where you would start playing with the opacity to make the image look better, as well as brushing in a mask to make it look better. And let's take a look at the Let's take a look at the actual overlay, the contrast ones I was talking about. So this is the overlay, this is soft light, and this is hard light. Usually soft light looks pretty good, but let me go and bring this down to about 70. So let's see the before without the blend mode, and this is the after. So it was pretty quick to make this image look pretty interesting with a little bit of contrast. Of course, the highlights are a little bit blown out here and we can clean up or crop out the rest of the image or any distractions. But since this is a blend mode tutorial, we'll just take a look at that. Now, we also have the difference and exclusion, which compares like the white part of a image or the white pixels and then inverses it. But usually I don't use these blend modes and let me put this opacity to 100 and there you go so can really not do anything with this unless you're doing some type of like infrared type of look and then the other blend modes are the hue saturation color and luminosity and to show you that i'm gonna show you a different image I'm going to, let's say, bring in this image right here. And I'm going to go to the develop section or the edit section by pressing the control or pressing the D keyboard shortcut. Anyways, I'll rename this to base layer. And this is a stock photo. And I usually use these photos for like YouTube thumbnails and so forth. And these are really good when you're using the blend mode options of Hue, saturation, color, luminosity work pretty well to adjust this. So for example, the first thing I want to do is maybe add a text layer. And I don't like these default lorem ipsum that comes up with these text layers. And it could be finicky sometimes to select it all, but let me see if I can do that. And I'll put type in blend modes okay and then i'll move it here i'll center it try to change its size like that so this is a good way if you're making like christmas cards or something with your photos and using the text layer and blend modes and i'll just keep it like that i'll change the color maybe to green I guess and before I show you the color and the luminosity blend modes let me show you some of the multiply so you can see the multiply blend mode it adds like a cool effect with the background of the wall and this is color burn linear burn darker color does nothing 
and then we go to something similar with lighting you can't even see it really and then we got soft light hard light hard light looks pretty good and here's the difference and exclusion they look pretty interesting so these this magenta color is the composite of green and then we got the hue saturation color and luminosity but that's how the text works so using these blend modes to create a graphic design or even some like christmas cards or birthday cards it's a good way to use blend modes with text but let me just delete this layer because i want to show you something else so one thing is this layer is mostly white but let's say my text was like indigo or something i want to put a indigo type of tint to this image so what i can do is i can click on this add color fill layer and then i'll use the color wheel to select let's say indigo so now you can see the whole thing is indigo but i can start playing with these blend modes and change it usually soft light looks pretty good but i can also go to hue take a look at how hue looks that's pretty interesting and then there's the luminosity as well which is not that good then there's color but i think soft light looks better than the color but what i can also do is decrease the opacity here to about 21 20 to just give it a slight indigo hue and going back to the hue the hue blend mode I only want to keep this part to uh, this indigo color what i can do is click on the mask here and i have the brush selected i'll click on paint actually i'll click on erase and then i can just paint this area away and since most of the image or the rest of the image doesn't have a color it's only impacting this green here and now take a look at this so we just impacted or colored this part of the I guess that's a plant and of course I can change the opacity and then I can also right click on it edit color fill and then I can play around and change the color if I want like that so these are different ways of changing the color of an image using blend modes the other thing I wanted to show you is with one of the filters so let's take a look at this image here the first thing I'm going to do is, first of all, this image looks soft. So just to demonstrate the contrast blend modes, I will duplicate this layer, rename it blend. Okay, so I renamed it blend. And then I'm going to change the blend mode to this overlay then there's soft light hard light so those don't look as good so instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete the layer and i'm going to go to the effects tab here click on add filter and then i will go to glow and under the glow section let me go to the styles right here i'll click on more i'll go to orton clean so this looks pretty interesting but it still looks pretty dark, this image. So let's click on this right here, the masking section and go to blending. And we can see the blend mode was automatically selected to luminosity. But if we change it to overlay or soft light, the image looks a lot more interesting. So let me show you the soft light with the glow. So that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at lighten color dodge no these don't look good so what i think i can do is i'll just keep it on soft light here on this image and then i'll go back to the base layer go to develop go to tone and color and then maybe increase the shadows just ever so slightly actually this is more than slightly and then i'll decrease the highlights decrease the whites and now this image looks pretty interesting so let's take a look at the before and after before and after so there's a sort of glow effect to it let's see if it's actually working so let's see the before 
and after, before and after. So it does make a huge change. So that's how blend mode works in a, in a basic sense. Keep in mind all of these blend modes, there's like a mathematical calculation depending on the color and if it's 50% gray or darker than 50% gray or brighter than 50% gray. And if there's any saturation in the color or the pixel, then it does the calculation based on that. But the most important thing is just to understand these are grouped together into dark, lighten, contrast, difference, and then the color and the luminosity. And usually I can't even explain how they work or I have a rough idea of what's going to happen when I choose these blend modes. It's almost impossible to remember the exact definition of each one of these blend modes word for word. But hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how blend modes work now. And just remember, it's a great way to add creativity to your images or even add text to your images. In addition, when you're playing with these filters, sometimes changing the blend mode makes the image look a lot more interesting. And if you guys enjoyed this video, you know what to do. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.